Hello, my name is Neil Curry. I'm a structural engineering lecturer at the University of Salford. Uh, this is a short video showing you how I use EndNote. I don't pretend for a second it's the most efficient way of using it, but it's the way I've taught myself to use it since version X4. We're now on version X7 as I'm making this video. And the process I go through lets me use the same workflow pretty much between Scrivener and Word, which I tend to flip between the two. So um, I commonly use Word on the Mac, this is version 2011 and what I found is that having had 15 um, years in industry I had to come back and teach myself again how to reference properly to the current referencing standards. The standards here at University of Salford is we like to use the APA 6 which has a rule book that you could beat a small horse to death with and it's quite a complex system but if you embrace EndNote and spend a bit of time looking at how to use it, then your citations and references will be fully compatible. So if we tab into EndNote X7, I've only been using this a couple of days because I upgraded to Mavericks and that killed my EndNote X4, so I had to upgrade. But essentially, these are the views that you'll be looking at. You have all of your groups down the left-hand side, your reference summaries, the data for that reference, and then your preview here, depending on which standard. So I've got all mine set to APA 6. But yours might look a bit different because maybe you've picked a different view from the right there. This is a view I found that works well for me. If I start to preview the PDFs, even though I have 16 gig of RAM, it regularly kills my machine. So once you've got up and running with EndNote, um, one of the advantages is, is that you can start to reference very easily within Word. There are lots of ways you can do it. The way I tend to do it is as I copy and paste between EndNote and either Word and Scrivener. The reason for that is that, yes, you have the site while you write tools that work in Word, but you don't within Scrivener. So I use this method because it's the same between them both, and I'm an engineer and a man, so I can't walk and chew bubble gum, so I try and teach myself the one way to do it between all the programs. So I have a record here from Robert Green, so I will command a C to copy. I will go into Word. And now uh, the important thing here is that when you're pasting text into a document, is if you want it to match the formatting, it should always be Shift Alt Command V. And I'll paste and match the formatting. Now that doesn't really look much like an APA 6 reference. I have the surname, I have the year. This funny number prefix with a hash is actually the record number. And the squiggly brackets or the curly braces around the outside show that the reference hasn't been formatted yet. And if I can come up to the X7 toolbar, I've already picked that I want APA 6 as a style. I can hit the format button. And what will happen is it will go away and it will format my reference to be APA 6 standard. Now you can tell quickly when a a reference is uh, straight from EndNote because it is an intelligent field so it's grey when it's highlighted. You can see how it's picked up as grey. Normal text isn't like that and again as you do, as you come down to click you'll see it, it picks up to be grey. So that's just an easy way to spot. It won't print like that unless you ask it to but typically it's a quick way that lecturers will spot if you're using EndNote or not. So how do we get these files and these records added in to EndNote? So if you come back to EndNote, you hit New Reference, and you get faced with a new window here. Typically, the types of references you use most commonly in a dissertation will be a book, it will be a conference paper perhaps, or maybe even uh, you'll be looking at a journal paper. But let's start with books, because they're the easiest ones to do. So you can give books various ratings. For this exercise, I won't. But I have a book which is by R J. No, it's not. It's by R B J T. Alan B. The year it was published is 1995. The title is Linear Algebra. Now it doesn't have a series editor. It doesn't have a series title. It was published in Oxford, and the publisher is Elsevier. Now the only other thing that I need to type into there is the edition which is the first. Now on a Mac you can press command S on a PC it's control S or you can go file save. I can close that now and what you'll see there is the record has been added into my EndNote library and you can see there as it's come in at the very bottom of the screen 
is giving you a preview. So that's my first book entered. Then the next one I want to do is to add a journal article. And typically journal articles are the default because they're the ones that you will see the most common and they are also used um, quite extensively in PhD research and journal papers. They tend to be right at the forefront of research. So I have a journal paper here that I'm going to create and the first chap is called Why Lie. Now because I have another author I have to press enter to get onto a new line. The next one is KKU and the next one is Rich Richard Liu. Now you can do surname comma first name or you can put um, the first name or the initial then the surname. It really doesn't matter, it's up to you. The year that this was published in is 2011. The title, as you might expect, is quite lengthy for a journal paper. There is an art to get in a short journal title, but then equally you want your paper to be found. So it's good to give something that's fairly helpful when people are searching. Here we go. The journal is the International Journal of Shell and Spatial Structures. The volume is volume 52, it is issue 168, and the pages go from 83, oops, go from 83 to page 96. And again, I can command S and save that. And if we're not sure, we can come down and check. And what it's got here is it's got um, what J Y Richard Liu, yeah, Lai Vu, Richard Liu. That's how the names have appeared. So that's fine. So we have the journal paper entered. So we have these two entries here. So I can click them one by one to select, or I can hold the Command key to pick multiples. Then Command C word button up there will take me to my word processor and shift alt command V and it will paste them both in and again I've got the record numbers the year the name and these curly braces so now what I can do is I can format my bibliography and again what it will do is to start to automatically update my references now this is just enough really to get up and running so now you can enter papers you can enter a book but you can also quickly format your references as you come in now as you get more and more proficient with the software you might want to change how some of these references work so let's pick Robert Green and what we will do is we'll paste in a new reference now what you can see is that this reference is unformatted and those references are formatted what we can start to do is we can come into tools, convert to unformatted, and it will remove all of the automatic formatting and come back to this point. Now maybe we want to know all about, we want green to be outside of the brackets. So when we format that, we must start the curly brace with a comma, the year, then the record number. This record number is really important, we mustn't mess with that. And what we can do then is we'll do format it and it'll go away. So then we can have green 2012, which is quite helpful. Now, the other thing that we can start to do is we could start to um, insert some other information to manipulate the references even further. So let's pick Command C, the Robert Green reference again. Paste it in. Now this time what we can start to do is we can put a backslash in because maybe the person or the journal we're talking about referenced green. Hmm. I know what I've done wrong. You can put some text apologies and then put the backslash in front of the name. 
and that's pretty good. If something's going wrong, then it will tell you what's going wrong. So now I can put um, Smith was uh, worried about uh, ninjas because clearly it plays in everybody's mind, and he was referencing Green's work from 2012. And again, I can start to mess with that. Um, but what was important there, if we come back and convert to unformatted, is it's whatever words you want to put, then a backslash in front of the name, and it'll put it all inside the brackets for you. It's not something I do a great deal, um, but it might be helpful for you if that's the sort of format you want to go with. Now the final thing is that if you want to put a page number, which is quite common, is that at the after the reference you'd put a comma, page 54 for argument's sake, and now when you update, what you'll find is you'll get green 2012, page 54, and away we go. You'll also notice under APA 6 it will start to list those out alphabetically and we'll continue to update those as you go. I uh, hope you found that quite helpful. I think the key thing is I quite often work with the uh, formatting turned off until the very end so that I can steal bits and check the record numbers. The good thing I like about record numbers is that if you see the record numbers there I generally keep my um, records sorted by record number so I can scroll down and go straight to that reference number there. If you want to edit any record all you simply need to do is to double click and you can bring it up to edit. If you want to you can also um, drag in PDFs that you've downloaded from your file manager and drop them on the top which in the full version I know gives you this little paper clip so you can add on information as you're going. And you always have that up to date PDF version to save with your record. The final thing I'll say is if you use a reference quite a lot and you're forever quoting it then if you keep scrolling all the way down you eventually see this field called research notes. So you can type all sorts of things within the research notes um, such as you know, um, this is uh, the greatest book about ninjas because clearly again ninjas are cool we can save that and then I can remember there's a book about ninjas somewhere but it has not in the title but the reference notes that I've made means that it's all searchable by going to this search box on the top right I can type ninjas and rather disappointingly, the only book I have on ninjas is about linear algebra. Um, I hope that was useful. Good luck.